Hey everyone, my name is Sam. Thanks for checking out this video. If you get to the end and liked it, then subscribe, bell notification, like video. I had someone on one of my other videos comment, can you do a, do you have that book tag? And I was like, sure. I have no idea what that is, but sure. So I looked it up on YouTube and then Haley and Bookland did it. And I was like, okay, Haley and Bookland did it. So it's a thing. And so I tried to avoid cheating. So I just kind of kept jumping through her video to find the prompts. So like I wrote them down on this little paper here because I was jumping through. So I didn't, I'm, I feel like I have some similar books. Actually, like, maybe half of my collection is probably similar to Haley and Bookland. So that way I could avoid cheating as much as possible. But I also was like, let's do, like, something fun. Like, outside of the box. Like, I'm not going to be picking Sarah J. Mass or Harry Potter, okay? Um, but I guess it's originally created from a, a channel called Keeping Tabs. But it's basically like a bookshelf scavenger hunt. And I have been wanting to do one of those. I just don't think I have. Or if I have, I did a really long time ago. But um, yeah, it's going to be interesting too because I kind of can't really bend down right now because of my back surgery or I have to do it in very funny, different, weird ways. So this should be interesting. Uh, there's 20 prompts total, so let's just do them. Um, so the first one, it's a book with deckled edges. Um, if you've watched my channel, you know I appreciate deckled edges because they add uh, je ne sais quoi to a lot of history books. Um, I feel like I just, didn't I just read a book with deckled edges? Right? Because I feel like I talked about that in a review video. Oh, Loki. That's what it was. Loki! Yeah. Um, I just finished reading this. That was right. Huh. Uh, and honestly, I just I wish they would put it on all historical fictions. <laughs> I do have quite a few of them. I'm just trying to remember where they are because I ranted about them one time and I started pulling books out and being like, oh, this has deckled edges. But yeah, so Loki by Mackenzie Lee has it. I high key love deckled edges. Um, I don't understand when people don't like them. <laughs> okay, um, a book with three or more people on the cover. Ooh. So we know how I'm not a fan of books with people on cover, especially when their cover changes. So I don't buy them. Um. Well, this is is this cheating? One, one, two. No, there's only two. What about the rest of the series? There's one, two, ha! Kind of cheated, whatever. Uh, a Question Holmes has one, two, three, four, five. I think they're all basically the same people. But still, there's three or more people. A book based on another fictional story, so like a retelling? Um, I mean, I must have retellings, right? I don't know if you can have Billy bookcases and be a white girl and not have a retelling somewhere. Isn't the Bear and the Nightingale a retelling of something? Does it say on the book cover? Please say on the book cover. It doesn't say on it, but I'm like 99% sure it's a retelling of something. The Vasilisa name and everything. So I'm going to go with the Bear and the Nightingale by Catherine Arden. Everyone should read this series anyways. Um, yeah, it's it has to be a retelling of something. It has to be. There's no way that it's not. A title that is 10 letters long. Oh, crap. Ooh. I feel like I probably have a lot of like either nine or eleven, but ten. Um. Oh boy. What is it? One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten. Oh. oh. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten. Ha! I do. Ha! Black Souls by Nicole Kastroman. Thank God there was a sequel. I still haven't read this book. I remember enjoying Blackheart. Oh, there's blue on the inside. I didn't know that it was like like a baby blue. Ooh, that makes me want to read it real bad. Maybe I should reread like Black Hearts though because I don't remember a ton of it. I remember someone gets kidnapped at the end. Should probably know who and why. Yeah, I should probably reread this series because I still haven't read this and if I don't get to it at some point I'm like, I should just unhaul it. But I appreciate these covers and it's just another, maybe I'll do that as like, I don't, I'll have to check Goodreads from like one of our 2020 challenge was like, read a book that has like a lower Goodreads rating or something like that. Yeah. Uh, a title starts and ends with the same letter. Oof. Uh, uh, oh, sorry, those weird noises are my thinking noises. Um, oh, is this cheating? I guess it's not cheating. It's just super easy because it's labor you go. Six of Crows technically does. Cause the S and the S. That's handy. I'm loving that I'm finding all these books in reach level so they don't have to awkwardly bend flop to the ground. A mass market paperback. Ooh. 
I don't know, I really hate mass markets. I've gone out of my way to not buy books because they're only out in pass mass market now. Um... Oh, I do! Ha 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 ha! Um, I have two Terry Project books in the mar mass, mass market because it seems to be just impossible to get the entire Discworld series in the same... <laughs> covers and sizes and formats. Um, so I have Small Gods and Going Postal. I still have not read Small Gods. I really need to get on that, but I've read Going Postal quite a few times. It's one of my favorite books. I remember watching that. That is like something I vividly remember is watching like the BBC adaptation with Moist von Ligwick and the dad from Game of Thrones who gets killed on the toilet. And like, it's, it's a weird movie, but I absolutely love it. Just like for, I don't even know why. It's so good. So I should really get to Small Gods too. Wow, I just noticed how weird that cover is. An author using a pen name? Um, I don't know actually. If it's anything YA, I like look into the author because I try to avoid like supporting like, I don't know, authors who have like criminal records of like messing with children and stuff. Wow. I remember I like fell down the rabbit hole like that what's it like the the mist of avalon author oh wow what a deplorable person um i don't think i do honestly no if i do i'm totally unaware of it everything in ya like there's a face to it normally i have to say no i don't think i do you know in like 20 minutes i'm gonna finish filming be like oh my god doy and it's gonna be someone like blatantly obvious jk rowling's not a pen name right that's not technically I guess the Robert Groth or whatever her... Mind you, we don't support Rowling anymore because she's transphobic. Um, a character's name in the title. Oh, I must. Um, I mean, there's Aru Shaw. Right? I'm just trying to think if there's anything like less well-known that I can point out. But like... Aru Shaw... Well, all of the series have the name in the title. There's the Charlotte Holmes series, too. A study in Charlotte, the last of August. Case for Jamie and a question of Holmes. I feel like this is actually a pretty easy one. My Lady Jane, because it's about Jane. And then my play Jane, because it's about another Jane. Oh, technically Eve of Man, too. Oh, I'm just going to pull books on stuff. Eve of Man by Giovanna and Tom Fletcher. I love that book, too. Oh, I have, well, I don't, I haven't read it, so I don't know if it's, it must be a character in the book, right? Like, I don't know why else they would name it this, but the Miss Ellicott School for the Magically Minded, like, man, I should probably get to this one, too. It's so cute. The book itself and the cover and everything. Should really get to this one eventually. I feel like I'm book shopping already. Um... Would Romanov technically fit? I mean, it's a last name, but like, still, it's, our, it's about a Romanovs, so that would work. This is an easy prompt, actually. Alex and Eliza, that's another one. Um, Sarah's Key, technically, yeah, that works. Um, I should probably leave it alone. Julia Vanishes, oh wow, this is really, it's a deep hole to fall down. The Dreadful Tale of Prosper Redding, too, and its sequel, but I don't own the sequel. I only own the first one, because I was waiting for the sequel to come out in paperback, and it just it hadn't when I was there. And now I haven't seen it in the bookstore. And I have mixed feelings about buying Indigo Online. So it's a hot mess, but yeah. Oh my god, everything everything from Ashley Heron Blake, technically. Like, Ivy, D, Ivy Aberdeen's Letter to the World, I have that one. I don't, I, I don't have the Sunny Clementine one yet. I want Sunny St. Clementine. But I want to get that one soon. Okay, she, I need to leave this alone. Um, yes, I have books with characters' names in the title. A book with two maps in it. Yes, I absolutely have that. Just because I, I noticed it when I was doing my, like, prettiest books. Oh my god, Belle. Stand up, girl. You are a strong, independent woman who don't need no man or pedestal. Um, just because I noticed this while I was doing my prettiest books of the year. Ooh, Guy Without Stars has this pretty map here of Valony, Valonay, and then right after it has the frets. So yeah, pretty pretty maps. There's probably, I, there, I'm pretty sure there's more in here too. This is a really good one for maps. Belle, stand 
stand up, girl. Before the days of Funko releasing things with... I don't know why, even, like, in Funko land, that we have, like, these women who are, like, these tiny waists and we can't stand them up because the head is so big and disproportionate. But then guys will always get, like, reasonable pros postures so you never have to worry about them falling over. Like, what the hell, man? Don't the two people who run Funko, aren't they women, too? Book adapted into a TV show. Um, I have to, right? It's not possible at this day and age that I don't. I mean, it's, I feel like it's kind of cheating to put Six of Crows because that whole Gracia trilogy adaptation hasn't come out yet. Nothing there. Nothing there as much as I would like. Uh, I wish the Gilded Wolves would get adapted, but it hasn't. Oh. Children with Blood. No, that's going to be a movie. It hasn't come out yet. Hmm. Oh my god. Why? Why am I suddenly incapable of finding an adaptation book? That's not a possibility in this day and age. Mm, what is happening? There's gotta be one here. Oh, there, I found it. Yep. Oh my god, ow. Oh god, it's at the bottom. <laughs> ow. Um, The Rook by Daniel O'Malley. The first season of this came out, I've only watched the first, like, three episodes, I think, with Olivia Munn in them, and I liked it so far. I have to finish it. I don't even know if it got canceled or got renewed for a second season i don't know if there's going to be more books in the series there doesn't seem to be any movement but like the rock it's a fantastic book you should all read it for sure i kind of want to buy the uk covers of this series too because they're really pretty and i just adore this series i mean oh no that was being movie too that's not coming out yet too there's a lot here that are like in production and like have been technically purchased like i'm kind of pissed whoever purchased the lunar chronicles and then did nothing with it y'all missed like it was peak once upon a time period why in the world wouldn't you adapt that an author that's famous for something else i'm wondering that like other than writing i'm wondering if i need to go to my nonfiction section because i have like amy poehler her book Oh, I mean, technically, hold on. Oh, I just thought of another one, too. Oh, hold on. Okay. Okay, they're all within arm's reach. I can deal with that. So, David Walliams, I actually didn't know he was a writer. I've just known him as the comedian. I don't know if he was one before the other. I assume he was a comedian before, but he writes a lot of, like, really, really popular um, middle grade young adult. Or not mid not young adult. Middle grade, like, young middle grade why am I having such a word, hard time with children's literature? Um, and then also Neil Patrick Harris. He, I, my I think my first introduction to Neil Patrick Harris was How I Met Your Mother. And then I was like, what do you mean he's gay in real life? That's not possible. Have you met Barney? Like, and then I found out about Doogie Howser. It was a weird time. Anyways, it's not fair that he's good at everything and a likable human being. I don't get it. But yeah, so Neil Patrick Harris or David Walliams. I didn't have to go into my nonfiction. I feel like that could be potentially kind of a hard one because I don't generally buy books just because of an author. Like, I think it's, um, who's that actress who's dating the blonde girl from Pretty Little Liars? She was a model? D Delina? Carly De Delavina? She's got eyebrows, like Emily Clark or whatever. Mmm... She was an actress and a model, and I don't even know what she does technically. She had some book kind of, like, it, it sends red flags off in my brain when the author's name is bigger than the title for some reason. I'm not like, so I'm not buying the book. I'm buying the author's name at that point. She had a book come out, and I've literally never been so uninterested in a book <laughs> before. Um, some YouTuber released a book, too, like um, Joe something, Joey, Gar Joey Gar is Garcetha a name? If it is, that's probably who. But yeah. Anyways, a book with a clock on the cover. Ooh, that's, um, I feel like I should limit myself to like historical fiction automatically. Or is there a clock on this cover? I mean, that's kind of cheating. Cause, no, it's just a tower. Oh no. Clocks. What about on these ones? The Cindy Anstey stuff. Is there a clock anywhere on these little, little cutesy clip art things? No. Oh no, it's not true. That's that yeah love lies and spies there's clocks there's lots of keys but there's clock too i also have timekeeper that has a clock on the cover by tara sim oh let me get it i love that book not enough people have read it i want to i want to shout it out oh my god come here oh i also have name of the wind that has a clock on it right oh no it's a piano i thought it was a clock that was broken um timekeeper by tara sim i read the first one loved it i have cram cram crown breaker chain breaker and i'm waiting for fire keeper to come out in paperback and then i'm gonna binge the trilogy i think that's the only i feel like that's an 
there, there's a lot of locks and keys, but like clocks, not so much. A poetry book. Ooh, I don't think so. I don't read poetry. Even when, when everyone was suddenly into it with that milk and honey poetry novel that was apparently like completely plagiarized. And then the author released another one that apparently was also again kind of heavily potentially plagiarized. I don't think I have anything of poetry, man. It's not something I consume. So unless I got it in like a book box once. Mm, I have a couple things in verse. Does that count? Oh, I don't even know if I have them physically anymore. Oh no. I don't even have the books that I had in verse anymore. I had The Language of Fire by Stephanie Hempfill, I think it was, and White Rose by Kip Wilson, but I think they were, they were both arcs, so I think I gave them back to my library to like give to some libraries because I'm waiting to get physical copies that I know I'm gonna want and love, and I just haven't seen them anywhere or on sale anywhere. So no, I had a couple things in verse, which I really enjoyed and I'm gonna read more of, but poetry just not my jam. Mm -mm. A book with an award on the stamp. Oh, oh, that might be bad. Ooh. See, I buy books when they're like newly come out before generally they've gotten an award. Well, Laura Ruby's book just won an award. Is it too early though? <laughs> Is it too early? <laughs> See, it won awards, but it doesn't have a stamp on it. No, I need a stamp, a specified stamp. Dang it! Book with a stamp on it. Uh, no, the hit you gave I had was too early come out. Oh no, oh God, no, I think I'm failing. No, oh no, I got those too early. Doesn't win any award, oh gosh. Oh no, I don't read a ton of award winning ones either. Like I read books if they sound good. This one, you know, it's just Oprah Book Club stamp. Dang it. Oh no! Am I failing? Does my, has Michael Grant won any awards? No, nothing on there. Oh god! Oh my god! Wait, no, I think I do. Hold on. Huh? Please, please, please! I'm out of ideas. Yes! I'm pretty sure this is the only book that like I own that has stamps on it for awards. Everything I buy, I buy too early. Like get it in the first run before it's one run one before it's one award. Same with like Trail of Lightning. I know that's one like Hugo Awards, but I got it right when it came out, so it doesn't have the sticker on it. Dang. Okay. Yeah. I think this is the only one I have. Do not say we have nothing by Madeline Thine. I still have not read this. It won the Man Booker, um, right? Or Scotiabank Giller. I think it was up for Man Booker Award too. Um, Council for the Arts winner too. So like it won, oh yeah, okay, it was shortlisted for the Man Booker Award. So it has a couple of them on there. Man, I was 99% sure I didn't have anything. <laughs> An author with the same initials as me. Mm. Okay, so I like, I don't know if it's cheating. Online my initials are SL, but in like legally my initials are SM. So I guess it would be easiest to find M first, because all of my books are last name cataloged, and then go from there. Luckily, I have lots of M's, so, oh no, I have to bend down. It's on the bottom row. Ow. Oh God. Ow. Uh, oh my God. No, wait, that's easy. <laughs> yes. Oh yes. Oh my God. Ow. Shannon Messenger. Yes. SM. Whoop, whoop. A book of short stories. Oh, um, I must. I don't tend to actively buy them out, but if it's a series, like, I enjoy that. The publishers put them together as like a big money grab, right? Um... I look at my books over there. I mean, like, I just finished reading The Deepest Blue, but it's not a short story. It's like a spin-off story of the series. Um, oh, The Lunar Chronicles. I mean, I'm trying not to pick book, big series, but, like, I don't... They only really do those for big series, right? Um, oh. This is Stars... Oh! Um, Leigh Bardugo did one, right? Yeah, okay. I mean, they're both big series, but whatever. Um, Language of Thorns and Stars Above from Lunar Chronicles and... Shadow and Bone series. A book that is 500 to 510 pages. That is a freaking specific. Oh no. Couldn't even give like a 50 page range. It had to be 510. How many pages does Sky Without Stars have? I mean, it's a thicker book. Oh, 570 something. No, we've, we've maxed it. Is that too big of a book? We're trying to guesstimate based on size, which is probably not the greatest because like they use different paper 
500, oh, 520 something. Dang it! Well, the second book is slightly smaller. Would that work? Oh my god, no, it's, how is it smaller? It has like 600 plus pages. This doesn't make any mathematical sense. Um, uh, what about the water dancer? It has 10 pages, I think, right? Right? No, 400. Dang it! Ah, this is gonna bother me. Oh, Melanie Burquist. Not Melanie. That's not right. Emma Burquist. What about 420? Can we? Dang it! Like 490 something. Dang it! Ah. Um. Should I go for like the narrower paperbacks then? Oh, dang it, 490. Ah! Oh, oh, what about Sebastian J. Castell stuff? The sequels, like, are fatter. They might be too fat. Ah, dang it, too fat. Oh, no. What about The Black Witch? I don't remember how long this is. Dang it, 600. Oh, my God. I will, I will figure this prompt out. I must. With the amount of books I have, there's no way I don't have something fitting into this parameter. I think there's probably too many. Ah, 600. Ah! Um, oh, Shades, I think it's too short. Dang it, 400. Oh my god, where the heck are all my 500 page books? What about the Librarian of Oxford? That's like a chunkier book. Oh, 400. Oh my god! Illuminate's too long. What about the Alchemist Daughter series? Oh, this is probably way too long. 700. <sighs> this one's probably too short now, right? 400. Oh my good gosh. <sighs> oh, stay. What about the Crown Breaker? It's a fatter book. 518. Wait, or those like, wait, is that like acknowledgements? No, that's actual text. Dang it. Uh, I'm going to figure this out or, uh, before I die. Um, what about Jessica Leap? Her book's a little chunkier, but not too chunky. I get past the author's note, the pronunciation. Acknowledgements. Oh my good gosh. 421. Oh. <gasps> That sanctuary. That's a little bit sadder of a book. Oh, I'm just dropping Funkos everywhere. It's a mess. 460. <laughs> what about containment? It's fatter. 480. For the love of all that is holy. Serpent and blood. 518. Wait, is that acknowledgments though? Hold on. Did I figure it out? That's acknowledgments. Dang it, 513. What the hell? Uh, what about The Last Magician? That's chunkier. Right? Oh, there's stuff in here that I definitely bent. Oops, my bad. Sorry, book. 480, 500, four. I might be close. Oh my god, if I'm like... It's 498 pages. What the hell, Lisa Maxwell? I know you did that on purpose because it would... So that this situation could happen. What about Renegades? Oh no. I don't even care if I'm promoting a big book at this point. I just need to know that there's something in my collection that fits this. 554. <sighs> what about Arch Enemies? I think Arch Enemies has smaller paper, though. Hmm. 470. Oh, my God. What is happening right now? Oh, my God. <laughs> Nocturna. Please, Nocturna. I'll appreciate you so much more. What about Rook? Or Stiletto? What about Rook? Please. Come on, you came through for me once before. Oh, god dang it. 480. Oh, for the love of God. How about the arsonist? 490. Huh? Oh my god, I found one! Huzzah! I think, right? Please stop, please don't be any longer. Oh, including the acknowledgements, 508 pages. Shout out Mary Pearson, because I was going to hurt someone, probably myself. Um, so, Dance of Thieves is a spinoff series to The Remnant Chronicles. The Remnant Chronicles seems to be people either love it or hate it. I am a massive fan of it, even though it has stupid white girls on the cover that you can't see their face and dresses, but 
I love the series. I really hope I get Vow of Thieves for Christmas. I had it on my list. I hope I get it. If not, I'm gonna have to buy it for myself soon because I'm breaking down and I need it. Oh my god, that was a task. Oh, I need a break for a second. Hold on. A book turned into a movie. Okay. I know, again, a bunch of these are in development. I mean, I could whip out the Shadowhunter Chronicles, but that's all the way in my bedroom. I'm not dealing with that. That was it's gonna be a show. Hmm. Movie. I don't read a ton that- oh! I even have the movie poster version. Crazy Rich Asians. And I know we would have to wait for the second book because there was the whole drama about like the, the cast screenwriting pay thing which I'm annoyed to hells with um, at Warner Brothers but I loved the first movie so much I'm trash for it. I kind of want to rewatch it. It's been like two weeks since I've watched it and I'm scratching and I kind of want to reread it again. There's just things that the cast do to me and I love Constance Wu. So yeah, Crazy Rich Asians. Yeah, let's stick with Crazy Rich Asians. I honestly don't think I have anything else. Oh my god, there's White Rose. I was gonna say, I remember, I was gonna say, I remember giving The Language of Thorns, like putting it on the shelf at, at work for someone else to have, but I don't remember doing that to White Rose. Because I had thought I bought Language of Thorns on Book Outlet. It was a whole thing for Black Friday, but it didn't end up going through my shopping cart. But I didn't do that for this one because this wasn't even on there. So I don't have poetry technically, but I do have a book. Thank God, because I left my bookmark in there. Um, but I do have White Rose, which is written in verse, and it's amazing. Do I have a graphic novel? Yes, I have a few. Um, <clears throat> I have Watchmen and V for Vendetta. I've read V for Vendetta. I haven't read the Watchmen one yet. I was trying to do that, I think, in 2018. I just didn't get to it. I think I will eventually. But this year, I got really into uh, reading a couple more just on whim. And I got read and just devoured it and loved it so much that I bought my own copy of Grimoire Noir by Vera Green Tea and Yana Bogach. Um, the illustrations are amazing. It's a really good Halloween one. Really creepy. Love the color aesthetic and everything in it. So Grimoire Noir. It's a fantastic graphic novel. I'm not a big consumer of graphic novels, so if you aren't either, this might be one to start on. I currently have like five Funkos that have fallen on the floor and I just don't have the effort to pick them up. Okay, I think this is the last prompt. Two or more authors. Is it cheating, Illuminate? It kind of is, because it's really easy. Um, two or more authors. Oh, what about This Is How You Lose the Time War? Or no, that was a library bar. I don't own that one. Dang it. Um, is My Lady Jane kind of... Those are two massive series. I feel like that's kind of cheating, but I don't know if I have any others. I know that Sarah Rash and Kristen Simmons are doing a book together in, or in 2020. I'm excited for that. Huh. I don't know that I have anything other than those big ones. Hmm. I don't think I do. I have authors with like 14 different last names, but it's just one person technically that wrote it. I really should get This Is How You Lose the Time War. That book was fantastic. But I mean, I guess I'll go with my Lady Jane and Illuminae because I didn't like Aurora Rising. I couldn't even finish it. But this is like God tier series. Amazing series. Same with this. These series totally made me change my perspective on authors, on books with multiple authors in them. Absolutely love Illuminae and My Lady Jane. I can't wait for the third book. Honestly, I'm kind of disappointed that I didn't like Aurora Rising, but I'm also like, I can't keep up with the amount of content Jay Kristoff puts out. So maybe that's for the best that I take a bit of a break. Because he has Empire of the Vampires coming out. in Well, it's supposed to anyway. It's the first one of 2020. And I still have to read his Storm Dancer, like the Lotus Wars one. Um, I'm still behind on Amy Kaufman. Oh, I just saw... Oh, I was excited. Ryan Grodin and Amy Kaufman are writing a book together, which, like, I love both those authors. Wolf by Wolf is one of the most underappreciated historical fictions, has alternate history books ever. So, like, I'm really excited. They could, like, write something really messed up that would tear my heart out, and I would really want other people to read it. I think that's all of the prompts, I think, right? Did I get them? Most of those. They got 18 of the 20, right? 18 or 19 of the 20? Um, I don't know how we stand on inverse versus poetry, but like, um, but yeah, I will link my social media down below and let me know if you do this tag, I will definitely go to your channel and watch. Um, so take this as an open tag. Um, yeah, I will see you all later and happy holidays.